Gift Biz Unwrapped, episode 358. When we think about starting something new or starting over, and we might be in our 40s or 50s, it feels like an act of rebellion almost. Attention gifters, bakers, crafters, and makers. Pursuing your dream can be fun. Whether you have an established business or are looking to start one now, you are in the right place. This is Gift Biz Unwrapped, helping you turn your skill into a flourishing business. Join us for an episode packed full of invaluable guidance, resources, and the support you need to grow your gift biz. Here is your host, gift biz gal, Sue Monheit. Hi there, it's Sue, and I'm so happy that you're joining me here today. Before we get into the show, I want to make sure you know about the big event happening at Gift Biz Unwrapped this coming week. The door is officially open for enrollment into Makers MBA 2022 on Monday. So that's February 21st if you're listening to this episode as it releases. I'm doing things entirely different this year. The rollout is different, the pricing is different, and honestly, I've never seen anyone launch a program this way, and I'm pretty excited to test it out. There are lots of benefits for you with this new structure, too. But here's the key. To get the information and have the opportunity to enroll, you have to either be on my email list or in my Facebook group, Gift Biz Breeze. The best way to make sure that you don't miss out is to go to giftbizunwrapped.com forward slash MMBA waitlist and sign up. Then watch your email for all the information. Don't delay because the enrollment period is short and fast this time. If the idea of starting a business by selling your handmade products has been swirling around in your mind, it's time to take action. And there has never been a better time to get started. Because the attention for handmade products, along with the focus of supporting small business, is at an all-time high. Maybe you've already started your business, but aren't seeing the growth that you want. Or you know you should have other things in place, but you don't know what or how. Or just overall, you aren't sure if you're doing this right. If any of this sounds like you, Makers MBA can come to your rescue. Makers MBA gives you step-by-step guidance and support as you start and grow a business of your very own. Think of it as a lifetime resource on how to and what's next for every stage of your business. Once you're in, you have access forever, including all updates and enhancements to the trainings. Again, to make sure this doesn't pass you by and to learn all the details of this year's Makers MBA program, Sign up to the list at giftbizunwrapped.com forward slash MMBA waitlist. It's the only way to get info on admission this coming week. Once you're signed up, watch your inbox where all the answers to your questions will be revealed. Today, we're addressing a topic I don't hear covered much at all. As women who've reached middle age, we have so much to offer to others and ourselves. It's a time when we analyze what we want for the second half of our life and decide what's really important. We can release the expectations that in the past we felt we needed to live up to and now do things for ourselves. Maybe it's starting a second career or picking up a past interest or new activity that you've always considered. We're going to talk about why now is your time, how to reconnect with yourself, and to get reintroduced to your passions. You'll also learn about the concept of no zero days and the details of this very important stage in our life, the Maven years. Oh my gosh, I am so looking forward to this conversation. I'd like to introduce you to Jennifer Arthurton. She's the creator and founder of Old Chicks No Sh**, a community designed to inspire and support midlife women in chasing their dreams and creating their kick-ass next chapter. Jennifer is an empowerment coach, podcast host, writer, and speaker. 
Having made her own midlife course correction, she is a passionate advocate of the inherent power and knowledge that women possess at a time when they often feel overlooked and doubt themselves the most. Like I said, I cannot wait to get into this conversation. Jennifer, welcome to the Gift Biz Unwrapped podcast. Thanks so much for having me. I think this is going to resonate with a lot of our listeners here. But before we get into that, I have a question that I like to ask each guest because it gives us a creative and different way of understanding who you are. And that is by having you describe yourself as a motivational candle. So if you were to envision a candle that really would speak all you, Jennifer, what would it look like by a color and then a quote or a saying? Yeah, I love that question so much. So my candle self is white. She is very bright. And her mantra is chase your dreams. It's never too late. It is never too late. Seriously. And this aligns completely with the topic, right? Do you find that a lot of people feel like it is too late? Yeah. I mean, we live in a culture that basically says, especially to women, that as soon as you get into your 40s and your 50s, it's like downhill slope to old age oblivion, which is simply not true. And when I was forced to begin reinventing my life at the age of 50, I actually bought into that for quite a long time. Like, who starts over at 50? Like, what's even possible at this point? Like, aren't I supposed to be riding off into the retirement sunset? But no, here I am starting over. No, (laughs) no, not yet. That is what is positioned to us. Like if you think about it through media and advertising and even just cultural belief, that's kind of the way that it's positioned to us. And so when we think about starting something new or starting over, and we might be in our 40s or 50s, it feels like an act of rebellion almost. And I'm going to add in people starting in their 60s too. But I remember when I was younger, like I would hear midlife crisis and all that. And I'm like, yeah, 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 <laughs> you know, whatever. But then when I experienced it, and I'm thinking everyone experiences it at different levels and different intensities, I'm like, yeah, this is real. I get it. And I'm sure we'll get into some of those stories back and forth a little bit. But before we do that, I'd love to hear your story. So I was a corporate executive. I had a 30-year corporate career in marketing. I was a wife. I was a mother. I call myself a gym rat. Like I was the person who was in the gym at 6 a.m. before going to work every day. And then in the year leading up to my 50th birthday, I found myself divorced, empty nested. My daughter moved three hours away to go to school. I lost my job and I became bedridden with a stress-related illness. Oh my gosh. So everything hit you at once, like a complete life change. A complete life change. It was like my life was going in one direction. And then within the span of a year, it had completely like everything that was available to me, every identity that I had in the world was basically stripped away. Like I had no idea who I was. So there I was at age 50, lying in my bed, feeling very sorry for myself, throwing huge pity parties. Well, and physically not feeling well either, I'm understanding. Physically, I couldn't even get out of bed. Like to go grocery shopping was like an act of heroism. Like I could not go grocery shopping and then put the groceries away after. I would have to like rest. There was a lot of days where I couldn't get out of bed. My body was just saying, nope, we are not doing this. And so even that part, you know, and I have a story about how much I tried to control and manipulate the situation that was happening to me. But like every part of who I thought I was at the age of 50 was no longer available to me. And the scary part was I realized that I had no idea who I was or what I wanted. So there's part of me that's saying like, who starts over at 50? Is this even possible? What's possible? Like, how do I do this? What are people going to think? Right. And then the other part of me was just like too tired to even think about it. Were you happy with your life before? Like, were you satisfied in your corporate job and the way your life was set up before the big blast of a change? So here's the thing. When I look back on it, it's very typical. Like I would find myself in moments kind of looking around at my life and going, is this it? Is like this all there is? Is this what I worked so hard for? And like I'd be in a boardroom and I'd be just kind of zoning out of a meeting and thinking, wow, this is it. And so those thoughts would come up periodically and I would immediately push them away because I'm like, first of all, back to real life. I got a job to do here. And when I look at it now, I was actually too afraid to even acknowledge those thoughts because if I acknowledged it, I was going to have to do something about it. And the thought of like, for example, leaving a 30 year career in a global world renowned organization, I was paid well, I had amazing job perks. And for the most part, I did like my job. 
but there was this nagging part of me that was just kind of like, hmm, I wonder if there's more. There has to be more. This can't be it. Because my whole career, I mean, my whole life basically that led to that point was me doing everything that I thought I should do. So go to school, get good grades, go to a good college, get a good job, work your way up through the corporate ranks. And I did all of that. And then I got to the top and I was kind of like, wow, okay, this is it. This is what I worked for. <laughs> this was my whole life. This was my achievement. And it just felt a little bit empty. I was like, there had to be more. Interesting. Okay. So what happens next? So after many months, I will say, of simply every day asking. So I started a process of like journaling. I started meditating. And after a process of daily going through these processes of asking the question, like, who am I? Like really underneath it all, who am I? And what is it? What do I want? I started taking the tiniest little steps that I could towards just doing anything. So I would go for a 10 minute walk in nature and I'd be like, okay, that felt good because that's all I could manage for that day. And then it would be back to bed. Or, you know, I started feeling a tug to start writing. So I just started journaling my thoughts and writing about my experience. And one thing led to another, and I just kept following, what are the things that I'm liking? Like, oh, I really liked that experience. Let me do that again. And I just kept following what I call following the energy. So not with a big master plan or anything, just taking actions that felt good to you at the time. Exactly. Because I am a firm believer of when you follow your joy or when you follow your bliss or your intuition, it brings you to more of that. And so we, as humans, and I think this is true of everybody, we kind of get into this all or nothing thinking, like I'm this or I'm that. And we tend to ignore the steps in between. And for a lot of us, those steps are tiny little things that are just leading us towards things that we love or things that give us energy or things that bring us joy. And the more we do those things, the more of those things that we attract to us and we just keep following that chain until I was writing this kind of blog just for myself about my own experience, my own life, my own process of discovery. And then one day I woke up and I was like, I should publish this in a blog. I was like, what are you doing? Why are you publishing this for all the world to see? But I did it. I just was like, okay, I have this instinct and I did it. And I published the blog. And I remember like I had to sit on my hands for three days <laughs> to not delete what I had put out there because I was so afraid of what, what people would think. Like, oh my goodness, this woman's lost her marbles. Like what's going on? And then I got past the three days and I was like, oh, okay. And then I felt compelled to do it again. And so what started as the blog just kept rolling forward into the podcast, into coaching, into, you know, I am now establishing a charity for midlife women. Like it's all of these things that have literally just evolved in front of me by following my instinct and the things that make me happy and bring me joy. Well, I love your story and it's subtle but powerful. Just the comments that you're making about just do a tiny step, just do one activity, one thing. And I think that that resonates with a lot of us who are listening here is maybe we have jobs already, we're happy in them, but there's something behind mm -hmm. the scenes that's saying, oh, I want to try this, I might like this. And hearing your story, it started with one blog article, granted you delayed putting it out for a couple days, <laughs> but it was just one. You weren't saying... I'm going to start this big, massive blog and people are going to listen and there's going to be articles like you didn't go into all of that. You tested it to see how you felt about it. And then it went from there. Yeah, I'm always talking about this in that like taking the tiniest possible step you think you can take in a direction of something that you want, right? Because again, it's this like I must take big leaps and bounds to get there when the reality is those tiny little steps add up to massive things in a much shorter space of time than you can imagine. One of the things I've been trying to do is get back into yoga. And so I have this thing that I call no zero days, whereas I have to do something in the direction of that goal every day. And sometimes those things are, okay, today, all I need to do is just roll out my mat and stand on it for three minutes. And then I can check that that was a no zero day. Like I actually did something in that direction. It's not a huge leap or bound. I didn't do a one hour practice that left me feeling amazing. Like all I feel capable of today is rolling out my mat and standing on it. Well, and more than likely when you take to use that example specifically, when you stand at that mat, you're going to do a stretch or two, or then you're going to say, I'm going to do a pose or two. You know, it, one thing leads to another, but you start with the mindset of rolling out the mat and standing on it. That's it. Exactly. Because whenever we're trying to establish a new habit or a new goal, our natural normal human brains will try and keep us in our comfort zone, right? Like it'll throw every obstacle at you and show every reason at you why you shouldn't do that thing. And the way to fool your brain is to do the tiniest little thing. Because like you said, the tiniest little step leads to another tiny step. And then you look at the week and you're like, wow, I got on my yoga mat seven times this week and I actually did like a 15 minute practice. 
Yeah, that's a couple hours that you wouldn't have done otherwise. So I think this direction is wonderful also for those who are listening who are saying, I know I want to do something else, but I don't know what that is yet. How do I figure it out? And it's not like all of a sudden you're sleeping and in the middle of the night you wake up and you're like, I've got it. (laughs) (laughs) You know, that doesn't happen that way. But a lot of people struggle with, well, what is it going to be for me? And so to your point about testing different things, doing what feels good, dipping your toe in the water of whatever you think would be interesting, not that that's going to be the thing, but it could lead you to the thing. And the other part of that is I truly believe that we all have the answers that we are searching for inside of us. The problem is for most of us, we have become really disconnected from ourselves. So life is busy. We live in the information age where we're getting a billion pieces of information thrown at us every day. We've got all of our jobs and our obligations and our duties that we have to take care of. And in that process, we become totally disconnected from who we are and what makes us happy, like what's our joy. So definitely for me, I realized as I was lying there in my bed, staring at the ceiling going, I have no clue who I am. I have no clue what makes me happy. And so I had to spend some time going inwards, which is why I took up a meditation practice. It was like, And my meditation practice, again, started with three minutes of just sitting in silence and just paying attention to my breath. It was just a way to calm my brain down enough to see what thoughts came out. And it was through that process where, for example, it would be like, okay, just go for a 10 minute walk in nature. Okay. I'm like, all right, I can do that. No problem. And then it's like, I had never written anything in my life other than like a corporate presentation or things like that. And that kind of came up in that space when I was like, okay, all right, we're going to write. And then I discovered, wow, I kind of really like writing. And then the podcast came about because I started talking to other women about their experiences. I'm like, if I'm going through this, other women have to be like, where are all these amazing women who are creating these amazing next chapters? They have to be out there somewhere. So I went in search of them and I started having these conversations and I was like, okay, you need to record these conversations. I had never even thought, ever dreamed about starting a podcast. And I have to say, it's probably the thing that I do that brings me the most amount of joy. Like I am so lit up after I do a podcast, I'm like floating on air for the rest of the day. I know. Are you like me? Like after I record an episode that I know is just going to be so valuable, just like after I press the button so that our recording is over, I just get this rush in me. Yeah, it's wonderful. Yeah. And this is the thing. So it's getting connected with yourself enough that you can kind of hear that inner voice, whether you want to call it your intuition or there's bigger spiritual context to it. But whatever it is, it's just to quiet yourself enough that you can hear what's coming from inside you, because we all have the answers. Well, you know, it would be nice if we could just go to the file cabinet that's titled, (laughs) here is your answer. (laughs) But unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. Although some of us don't get to as dramatic a place in life as you did. And in a way, I guess you tell me if this is how you feel about it, but it was kind of good that that happened because the intensity of it led you to what you're doing because what you ended up needing to do as your solution was pretty much for your own survival. A hundred percent. I consider it probably the greatest gift I've ever had in my life because what I realized, you know, I alluded to this before is I was acting out of obligation. I was doing what I thought I should be doing. And nowhere along the way did I actually check in with myself to say, is this making you happy? Is this bringing you joy? Is this how you want to be spending your time? I never considered that. I was just like, here's the path that was laid out in front of me. It's like, okay, follow along. And I truly believe that this is the power of midlife and why so many of us kind of have these moments of consideration about how do I want to spend the next 20, 30, 40, 50 years of my life is because when we reach that point in midlife, I mean, everything in our lives is shifting at that point. You know, we are experiencing menopause. Our kids are leaving home. Maybe our careers are changing. And it really is a point where we get to, we have the opportunity to stop and consider ourselves sometimes like me for the first time ever in my life, right? To say, what is important to me? Like, what do I want my life to be? And I truly 100% believe that this shift in our lives, like all of the things that are happening to us physically, mentally, and emotionally at this time of our lives is not just like a mother nature forgot about us. It's very intentional to get us focused on ourselves, on what our true authentic beliefs are, what our gifts are, all of that stuff. It's to stop us, like to bring us up short so that we can actually consider these things for the first time maybe ever. And that's literally what it was for me. I mean, I was going along my life and probably had it not happened, I would still be on that path. Have you ever watched Dr. Phil? 
Have you seen the episodes where he talks? You know, it fits with different topics, but he does this thing where he lays out on the floor however many number of years lifespan is. So let's say for women, it's I'm picking a number. I don't know what it is, but let's call it 92. (laughs) Okay. And then he makes a woman stand on the age that she is and have her look back at all the years that have already happened, like all the numbers on the floor, and then look forward and you get a real perspective of where you are. And that's so powerful. So I'm just bringing it up because in our mind's eye, even all of us can create our own line and think about where we are. And I think as we get older, which doesn't happen when you're younger, because when you're younger, you think you have forever, right? Like, you know, logically, you're going to get older, but it's so far off in the future, it doesn't matter. And then all of a sudden, you wake up one morning, and there it is. But the good thing about that, I think, Jennifer, tell me what you think, is it's time to act, because you can't delay anymore. Because if you look to Dr. Phil's line, how much more time do you have? What do you want to waste? Plus, you don't know how capable you're going to be for all those years. When you think about the span of a woman's life, I often look at this in chapters. So the first part of her life is the maiden years, where it's all about attracting a mate, starting a family. Then there's the mother phase, which self-explanatory, we raise our families. And then typically what you see is this idea of crone, which is the wizened old woman sitting on the mountaintop sharing wisdom with the world. But in between mother and crone, and like when I saw that definition, I'm like, yeah, but I'm not an 80 year old woman yet. Like I'm not like this old wizened woman who knows everything. Like I wasn't relating to that. So when I looked at the gap between when motherhood, when your typical mothering duties are over and crone, I realized that there is like a 30 to 40 year span of life, which is actually the longest phase of our lives. And it seemed to be ignored everywhere I looked. And so I retermed those years, the maven years. And if you look at the dictionary definition of the word maven, it says an expert with knowledge and wisdom to share. So it's not like we know it all and we've lived this long life and we're sitting on the mountaintop. There's this whole section of time where we have knowledge, we have life experience, and we've acquired wisdom through that, but we're still young enough to use that to actually change the world. And so this whole phase of what I call mavenhood really is about coming back to yourself, coming back to your truest nature, and then figuring out like what it is that you want to do, what's important to you, what legacy do you want to leave, what's the mark that you want to leave behind for your family or your community or whatever that looks like. It sounds like it's really a mindset switch also. It's exactly that. Because you could also be a maven in your corporate career. You've risen the ranks, if you will. Now you have newbies coming in who you are now teaching versus you in the past having been a student or aspiring. Exactly. And that's actually how the name Old Chicks No Shit came to pass because back in my corporate days when we would have new people join the team, and it was a total joke, but one of the things we would say is just follow us old chicks because we know some shit. Right. <laughs> right? And then when I was in that period of figuring out what I was, what's next, it came back in full force. And I was like, oh, this has a whole different meaning now. (laughs) Well, what do you say? And I've experienced this not too much because I've been running my own business now for quite a while, but I was starting to feel it a little bit. Well, is that true? No, that isn't true. I do sense it sometimes out in my day to day is that as you get older, there are times when you're discounted. Oh, 100%. So let's talk about that a little bit. I had never, ever experienced that before. You know, I come from a family where I was the youngest by far. And then even as I was raising the ranks in corporate, I was also the youngest. So I had a lot of people to look up to and aspire to be also. And then all of a sudden, when you get to that place, there are less people, you know, less paths to look up to in terms of where you want to go. But there's also that dynamic that you're perceived differently. 100%. And this is probably the biggest reason why I do the work that I do is because I see so many brilliant, ambitious, smart, like truly amazing women who are in their 40s, 50s, 60s, and even older who are doubting themselves right? Like in some aspects, they're more confident than they've ever been. And then in other areas, they are completely doubting themselves. And part of the reason for that is that we live in a culture that idolizes youth, right? 
and this is like one of my pet peeves is when I really started paying attention to this is like every time you see a woman who's in her 40s or 50s in a television commercial or an ad, it's for things like bladder leakage protection, meal replacement shakes, vitamins to keep you energized so you can play with your grandkids. And I was like, okay, that's nice. And that's good. And those are very necessary things for a part of the population. But it's also a tiny sliver of who we are as midlife women. So I was like, where's the representation of women starting over, women climbing mountains, you know, women starting businesses and running charities? Like, where is that? And it was nowhere to be found. And so I read a stat one day that said that we are bombarded with something like 30,000 images a day about what it means to be the perfect woman. And the definition of the perfect woman as served up to us by the media is between the ages of 25 and 35 with a certain physique, you know, that is becomes what we measure ourselves up to, right? Like very subconsciously, of course. I mean, we know that we're older and we know that things have changed. We've got more gray hair and wrinkles and, you know, maybe our bodies have shifted. But subconsciously, we are measuring ourselves up against what we think or what our culture has served up to us as being the definition of what a woman should look like. And that then causes us to focus on the things like our changing bodies, our wrinkles, our graying hair. And we become so hyper-focused on that as being our value in the world, as opposed to our true value, which is the knowledge and the wisdom and the life experience that we have. Like all the skills and capabilities that we have collected along the way. I'm happy to see that a little bit of that seems to be changing. I mean, we're starting to see all different body sizes in some of the fashion magazines and catalogs and all, as well as all different ages. So I think there's been some progress made, but it's still out there for sure. Yeah. I mean, we still have a long way to go. And even now, sometimes we'll see gray hair models and things like that, which I think is absolutely amazing. And I applaud it. But even some of those images are women who are genetically gifted, that their hair went is the exact right of shade of gray to complement their faces, that they tend to be taller and thinner. So we're making steps and definitely in body size and body positivity and all of that. But I think there is still a, quite a ways to go to be able to see midlife women for what they are. I mean, we've been taught as a culture that our value lies in our ability to have kids and to raise kids and what we look like. And so when we're no longer active momming, we're no longer able to have children and we don't look the same as we did, it can be easy. I can see exactly how we can fall into that trap of questioning our value in the world. Is one of your goals for this year a new approach to social? Are you finally admitting that you're spending far too much time there without seeing anything in the way of results? Or... Do you jump onto Instagram, planning to post, but get caught up in all the fabulously produced reels? Then you get intimidated and step back. Yeah, (laughs) me too. We know at this point we should post consistently with quality content. But when it comes time to actually do it, figuring out what to post is overwhelming and time-consuming. That's why I created content for makers last year. Many of you have purchased this high-value, low-cost program and have newfound ease in your posting. And guess what? If you already have content for makers, there's no need to purchase it ever again. One and done, because it teaches you a posting strategy and prompts that are timeless and can be used over and over again. Now, based on your feedback, I've enhanced content for makers to include a hard copy social media scheduler because makers like tangible planners where we can add our own creative punch to the mix, right? Drum roll. Introducing Connected 2022, a content scheduler that helps you plan out your topics, whether they're for social media, blog articles, or videos, all in one place. Now, to clarify, this is not your daily planner. This is focused on content planning. It includes direction on how to nail down a strategy, monthly cues for new content, and your own images. And it can be used in conjunction with content for makers or as a standalone resource. Finally, feel in control of your content with a strategy and purpose not just something random that you think of on the fly to publish that day. Intentional content saves time so you can focus on other business tasks 
and attracts customers, which brings eyes to your brand and orders to your cart. To see more about the Connected 2022 Social Media Scheduler, go to giftbizunwrapped.com forward slash connected 2022. And now let's get back to the show. So what is your advice for people who are feeling less than because of any number of the things that we talked about? I am a huge proponent of people doing whatever it is that they want to, need to, feel compelled to do to feel good about themselves. But my advice is, you know, okay, I still dye my hair because really I hate the shade of gray that my this is coming in. I'm with you. <laughs> I still go to the gym, partly for health reasons, but I also want to fit into my jeans, right? And I get eyelash extensions because I hate mascara. I have always hated mascara. But I know, and I will do those things because those things make me feel good. But I also know that that is not my value in the world. If I did none of those things, I am still a valuable contributor, regardless of my age. I have, again, like all of this knowledge and wisdom and life experience to share, like with my family, with the world, with my community, like whatever it is. So being able to see that part of yourself as opposed to just looking at the physical aspects of who you are. But I would agree with that because when you look in the mirror, if you're not happy with or accepting what you see, that does something to you internally. So whether it's Botox or lash extensions or the way you're wearing your hair or the color of your hair, I think that looking in the mirror, it should be a reinforcement of you and your values and make you feel good so that you can go out and do the other things that you talk about, Jennifer, in terms of providing so much good and wisdom into the world. It's not for everybody else to say, oh, look at how good she looks or not know your age or something. It's for you. Exactly. Justine Bateman, do you, I don't know if you remember her from what show was it? Yeah, she wrote that book called Face, 14 Square Inches of Skin. And it basically is talking about how the world judges us based on our faces, which is 14 square inches of skin. And the hyper obsession that we have with the wrinkles and why we spend as a collective upwards of $25 billion a year on anti-aging cream serums, this, that, and the other thing. And again, like I am 100%, like if you have something that works for you, a hundred percent you should do it. But again, let's not let that be the sole judgment of who we are as people and our value in our society. Right. Because we've all heard about or seen people who take it too far. And the question goes back to who are you doing it for? Exactly. And that I think is sad because for me, you know, it's somebody who maybe doesn't see how valuable they are on the inside. Yeah. They're doing it for others' approval, not their own in some cases. So the first thing that you do if you're feeling that you're getting reactions or whatever it is with regard to the stage you are in your life, the first thing to do is for yourself, do whatever it is that makes you your best self, that makes you feel good about yourself. And clearly that's the energy that you are going to exert out into the world is the energy that you already feel inside. Exactly. So what else then do you do? Okay, so we've got that done. We've been to the salon. We've done our nails. We are working out. Cause, and, you know, you also want to do things that make you the healthiest you, too, which inevitably comes back to your mental state, too. If you can move without hurting and pain, you're just going to feel overall better also. So we're all put together in that way. Then what happens? So I think one of the very important things that I always encourage women to do is to carve time out for themselves. So whether that be to spend time with a journal or meditation or simply doing something that you love, like something that fills you up, because when you're in the process of joy or bliss or just feeling like fulfilled into yourself, it's a whole lot easier to step away from the comparison game about, you know, oh, I don't look like I used to or, you know, this isn't the way that it used to be or whatever it is. Like when you're in that state of joy and bliss, you're filled up and you're less likely to see yourself as having lost anything. So again, whether it's you love reading and you spend 20 minutes a day reading a book, like whatever it is you do, like carve time out for yourself to do that thing. And it doesn't need to be anything that anybody agrees with or allows you to do. This is like personal time for yourself to do what you want to do, to do what makes you happy, to bring you joy and to really connect in with yourself. Because when you get into that state of being in your joy and in your bliss, it attracts more things to you. Well, and let's face it, we're living the life for our own experience. So you want to not always be working or always pleasing others, you know, which we spend so much time trying to do, but you want to feel good about the life that you're living for yourself. Exactly. 
This time of our lives is all about, like I said before, making ourselves happy what feels authentic and joyful for me. And like one of the things I realized in my own journey was, you know, like I got a lot of great things out of my corporate career, but it wasn't a hundred percent aligned with who I am as a person, right? Like I had kind of squeezed and molded myself into fit into various different places of my career that just didn't align with who I am on the inside. Whereas what I do now is a hundred percent with aligned with who I am as a person. And sometimes we have to be able to carve out those spots, that time for ourselves to connect in or to do those things that we love in order to get on that path. Yes. And good point that you bring up, too, is that sometimes within corporate also, you're kind of bracketed because depending on your business, there's a way you're doing things. There's a way you're presenting if it's a product or how you're supposed to market to kind of take it back to you. There's direction from not just you. So when you started your own business, you then are running the ship. And we talked a little bit in the pre-chat about this, but there are a lot of people who are listening who are considering starting their own business probably for the first time in their own life to get a little bit of traction going so it can bridge the retirement. It can become a second career, for example. And what you've been just talking about now is bringing you fulfillment and you joy is what you're able to accomplish in your own business. Well, exactly. I mean, there's so much talk about finding your purpose in midlife. And honestly, I believe that your purpose is what brings you joy. Your purpose is what makes you excited to get out of bed in the morning. So whether that is a business or whether it's just doing something as a hobby because you love it or maybe it's spending time with your kids, whatever that is, that is your purpose is to find your joy because that is the pathway to just about everything else. Yes, I agree with you. So I feel like to round out this conversation, it would be helpful also to talk about what you do when you encounter people who make snide remarks about your age on social or minimize you in a boardroom meeting because you're either a woman or you're older. Do you have any suggestions or guidance when we're faced with those situations? Obviously, we can't control the reactions or the comments of other people. But I think one of the most important things is to not take that on, to not internalize that. Because it's so easy, especially when we be feeling a little bit uncomfortable with kind of what's happening to us mentally, physically, emotionally, we might be in that spot and then somebody says something and it literally kind of drags us down. So I think the important thing is to just know that that person is reacting from like whatever it is that they're reacting from, but it actually has nothing to do with you. So they're reacting to your age because they're afraid of getting old. That has nothing to do with you. And just being able to stand in the fact that you are a strong, vibrant, smart, kick-ass woman, like that's where we kind of need to be is to really ground ourselves in that as opposed to being taking on what's coming in from the outside world. Yeah, I agree. And recognize that it's not just you personally, that people do this. What's the saying? Hurt people hurt people. Or what people think of me is actually none of my business. Yeah, there you go. Love that one too. And I think the another thing that I know is helpful is if you have a community of people who you've called on for support, I'm not talking about like a life coach or something, but even like a Facebook community who also makes candles or knitters or my community of makers, anywhere where you have a group of people that you come together and inspire each other. This could be a place to go and just show your newest creations of what you're doing or something like that to get affirmation about the value of the work that you do. Or to say, hey, I'm really having a down day. Here's what happened. And get everyone else to say their responses that are going to be uplifting and get you back to a good spot. Exactly. I am such a huge believer in the power of community. I know that my own journey would not have been what it is without having the support of like-minded people. So whether that be, like you said, a community related to what it is that you do or your age or like whatever it is, but you need people, everybody, and we're human. We all need people who can see us for what we are, who can hold our beliefs when we're struggling, who can see our gifts when we're not seeing them and to be able to reflect that back to us. And it's one of the reasons why I run the Midlife Kickstarter Mastermind, which is like an intimate group of women all coming together who are on a journey to create something for their next chapter. And like the support that I see from these women in that group, in that community, it brings me to tears half the time because it's just women supporting women. And I truly believe that we have the power to not only lift ourselves up, but to lift each other up. 
And when we do that as a collective, we're actually changing the paradigm of what it means to be a midlife woman. So each of us stepping into our power and helping another woman step into her power is actually raising the tide for all of us. And us stepping into our power and to show people what's possible in midlife is actually what's going to change the paradigm about how we are seen. Absolutely. So who is the right fit for your masterminds? So basically, it's any midlife woman who is on a mission to create something new in her life, whether it's finding her purpose or starting a business, training for a new career, whatever that looks like, and wants the support and encouragement of like-minded women on the same journey. That is the community that I bring together. So I bring together eight women at a time. And we spend four months together, basically helping and support each other and raising each other up because the journey, especially if you're moving from corporate into self-employed, or you might be leaving a relationship and relocating somewhere like that journey can be difficult, right? And it can feel very, very lonely. And having women who can help you when the going gets tough, when you're just not feeling it, when you just want to curl up in a ball and hide away from the world, like having that community who will hold you accountable, who will encourage and support you is gold, absolute gold. Like I belong to various different groups for probably more than five years. And I will always do it because I see so much value in that. I love what you're doing with the masterminds. I love that it's a smaller group where women probably feel very safe in an environment of a fixed number of people. And I can only imagine the relationships that develop even after the masterminds are over, just the solid connections that you're forming in that group. Like I said, it's the most beautiful thing to watch because I see women just giving their perspective on another woman and the way she sees that woman, that woman would never have seen herself that way. And the more we hear that, the more we see that, and the more we have that reflected back to us, it allows us to be able to believe it. Absolutely. And what about your podcast? Tell us about the content there. So the Old Chicks No Shit podcast is all about sharing stories of real women who have reinvented their lives, who are tackling things they never thought possible, whether they be physical, mental, or emotional challenges. And the whole reason I created this podcast is because when I was trying to figure out what was possible for my life and I couldn't see it anywhere, and then I went searching for it and realized there are so many women who are doing so many amazing things in the world. And I wanted to make sure that I could share that with everybody so that other women could see themselves in those stories and feel empowered to be able to create the life that they wanted, regardless of their age. Fabulous. Well, I know you're going to pick up some listeners from my community for sure. (laughs) One final thing I want to ask about, you brought it up real quickly, and I made myself a note because I wanted to come back to it. What's going on with the charity that you're creating? I haven't named this yet. It's very early in the stages. And honestly, I'm still figuring out how this whole thing works. But I read a research study that said that women are 80% more likely to be impoverished in retirement than men. And when I started to dig into this study, it said, I mean, there's a number of reasons why that is. But some of the key reasons were the fact that, first of all, women earn less from the get-go. And that on average, women reach their peak earnings at age 44. And men reach their peak earnings at age 55. And their peak earnings are 40% higher than women's peak earnings. The whole way through. The whole way through. And so men having 10 more years to kind of get money under their belt, it leaves a lot of women kind of left behind. And then you consider illness, divorce, death, like whatever that might be. So many women who are interested in creating this amazing next chapter might be struggling to put food on the table. So the charity is going to be all about scholarships to help women start businesses or to retrain for new careers on all kinds of different things like that, that will support the women. And I really want this to be a women supporting women charity so that the women who donate will be able to sit on a board, which will decide where the money goes and who the money goes to. So still in its very, very early days, but when I realized, and the number of women over 50 who are living below the poverty line, another staggering number. I was like, wow, we again have to give back. Like all of us midlife women need to be like supporting each other to be able to do that because no woman should have to live below the poverty line over the age of 50. That just blows my mind. Absolutely. I agree. Well, two things here. First off, when the charity is established, I definitely want you to reconnect with me because I want to put the link in the show notes of this episode. And this may be an interesting topic for another podcast. You know, actually establishing a charity, the steps that you went through, and then we can get eyes on the charity as well. So two things to think about in the future, Jennifer. (laughs) For sure. This is definitely a passion project for me, and I'm still figuring it out one tiny step at a time. 
Yeah, I mean, it might take a while. The tiny steps like you were just talking about before in the very beginning. That's how we get big things done is taking tiny steps forward. And it started with the research article you found. That gave you the idea. So there you go. (laughs) All right. Where online could people go to find you? So you can find me on Facebook, on Instagram, and my website, which are all of the same name, Old Chick Snow Shit. And I also have a Facebook group as well, too, all of the same name. So you can find me there. Perfect. Well, Jennifer, this has been a really inspiring, enlightening conversation. Thank you so much for coming on the show today. Thanks for having me. I really enjoyed our conversation. The more we do things that we love, the more we attract and discover similar activities that also fill us with joy. Regardless of whether you've reached your maven years yet or not, I think this is one of the most powerful episodes I've done to serve you. It can empower you if you're at this point or prepare you if it's in your future. As women, regardless of our life stage, we should stand tall and proud. Thank you, Jennifer, for focusing your work on this important topic. I'll be back next Saturday for a discussion about website setup, where you'll learn the single biggest mistake people make when they create an e-commerce site. Meanwhile, you can also tune in on Wednesday morning for my special tips and talk show. Thank you so much for spending time with me today. If you'd like to show support for the podcast, let me know how it's helped you something new you've learned, or a topic you'd like to discuss more. Just add it as a review. I read everyone personally and absolutely use your suggestions as guidance for new guests and topics. There are other ways to show support for the podcast, too. Visit our merch shop for a wide variety of gift biz paraphernalia, like mugs, t-shirts, water bottles, and even more featuring logos and quotes to inspire you throughout your day. Take a look at all the options over at giftbizunwrapped.com forward slash shop. All proceeds from the purchasing of these products help offset the costs of producing the podcast. And now be safe and be well, and I'll see you again next time on the Gift Biz Unwrapped podcast. I want to make sure you're familiar with my free Facebook group called Gift Biz Breeze. It's a place where we all gather and are a community to support each other. I've got a really fun post in there that's my favorite of the week, I have to say, where I invite all of you to share what you're doing, to show pictures of your product, to show what you're working on for the week to get reaction from other people, and just for fun, because we all get to see the wonderful products that everybody in the community is making. My favorite post every single week, without doubt. Wait, what? Aren't you part of the group already? If not, make sure to jump over to Facebook and search for the group Gift Biz Breeze. Don't delay. Come join us in Gift Biz Breeze today.